Mungu kwa ajili ya siku hii ya leo. Giving us once more an opportunity to worship you. Umetupa nafasi tena kwa Mungu. We want to dedicate this service in your holy hands loving Father. That you be pleased, my Father, to be in our ministry. I pray that your glory will cover each one of us. Your blood will speak for each one of us. In the name of Jesus. Loving Father, I speak your blessing upon your people. I call upon the grace of miracles in the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says the things which are impossible to men are possible with you. The Bible tells us your hand is not shortened. Neither is your ear deaf that it cannot hear. So loving Father, as your word says, where two or three will gather together in your name, you will be in their ministry. May your presence be here, loving Jesus. Raise them that are listening from afar before your presence. Some anointing flowing here, flow in their premises. In the name of Jesus. Loving Father, if there is any demonic scheme and plan against this service, I want to cancel it in the holy name of Jesus. I want to break every demonic device and program against our service today. There will is the power of the Most High God to break every yoke of the enemy. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Can you say amen? Rest in the house. May God bless you as you get seated. In the presence of the Lord. Thank God for granting us once more an opportunity to come to his house. When we approach the throne of grace, there is always enough grace to help us. So even today there is enough grace. Today anything before the presence of God is possible. Nothing is too hard for you. So as we listen to his word, wait upon the Lord. Listen to what the Holy Spirit says. When you obey the voice of the Spirit of the Lord, definitely something in your life will happen. In the natural, we are limited human beings. But in the spiritual world, we are not limited. So as, as, as much as we are human beings, we have the grace of entering the spiritual realms. In the spirit of the Lord. And when we exercise our authority in the spiritual realms, there is always obedience to the demonic powers that work against humanity. Demonic powers have to bow. Who are working against the creation of God. That's why God has allowed us as human beings to preach the gospel. Being human beings. Not spirits. Zero. This gospel is not for the angels. It is for human beings like you and me. But God may prove to the powers of darkness. 
ili kwamba Mungu akadirishie nguvu za ngiza na that the human beings have power over them ya kwamba wanadamu kuna wanadamu ambao wana nguvu kualiko when you are in Jesus ukiwa ndani ya Yesu you are not just a natural person a normal person wewe si mtu wa kawaida in Christ you are a new creature ndani ya Kristo wewe ni kiumbe kipya and the new creatures are different from holy preachers na kiumbe kipya ni tofauti na vile vya zamani before you get saved you are a holy creature kabla ya kuokoka wewe ni kiumbe cha zamani you get saved you are given a new nature na kuokoka unapewa asili mpya you are given the nature of god in your life unapewa asili ya Mungu ndani ya maisha yako the bible calls you a new creature ni nakuita kiumbe kipya you are given power umepewa nguvu that you may ashinde nguvu za ngizi oh glory to god tukufu kwa mungu jesus said he that believe in me ndiye anasema anayeamini the works that i do shall he do also kazi ninazozifanya hata yeye atazifanya and the greater works than these shall he do na kazi kuu kuliko hizi atazifanya and we are the people who have believed and who have faith in christ jesus na sisi ndisi walioamini na kukana na kushikamana na yesu kristo and therefore we are the right people to do great things kwa hivyo sisi ndio wale watu kufanya mambo makubwa. Can you say amen? Sema amina. So today I want to bring our teaching. Leo nikipenda kuleta fundisho. The power of uh, prophecy. Nguvu za unabii. You may not be called a prophet. Unaweza ukawa hauna jina nabii. But I want to prove to you today you can prophesy. Lakini nataka kukudhihirishia leo ya kwamba unaweza kukatabia. When you prophesy things can happen. Na unapotabiri mambo utendee. In the book of Mark chapter 11. Therefore Amin nawaambia yote atakayewaambia mlima huu ungoka akakatukwa baharini wala asione shaka moyoni mwake ila amin kwamba hayo asemayo yametukia ya, ya yatakuwa yako kwa sababu hiyo nawaambia yote ya, uh, yoyote mliyoambayo mkisali aminini ya kwamba mnayapokea nayo yatakuwa these are the words of jesus christ haya ni maneno ya yesu kristo he said whatsoever he shall say whosoever shall say to this mountain anasema kwamba yote atakayewaambia mlima huu be thou removed moka and be cast in the sea ukatukwe baharini and shall not doubt in his heart wala asione shaka moyoni mwake but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass ila amini kwamba hayo asemayo yatatukii jesus said he shall have whatsoever he said yesu akasema ya kwamba atapokea kile anachokisema we know god is true he's not a lie tunajua ya kwamba mungu ni ni wa ukweli si mwongo and this these words were not spoken by a prophet they were spoken by christ jesus himself na haya maneno yangu neno na nabii fulani yalinema na Yesu Kristo mwenyewe. He said you you can speak to a mountain. Akasema unaweza kukanenea mlima. And if you don't doubt, na kama hauna shaka, you command it to be uprooted. Uamrishe ukamoke. He said, akasema you will have what you are said. Utapokea kile unachokisema. Do you believe it? Because that's the question. Je, unaamini kwa maana hilo ndio swali? So what we say can come to pass. Kwa hivyo tunachokisema kinaweza kutimia. That is how God created the heavens and the earth. Hivyo ndivyo Mungu alivyoomba mbingu na nchi. He said let there be and there was. Akasema na iwe na ikawa. And when Jesus came, Yesu alipokuja, he said human beings can also have the same stand of God. Akasema say and things can happen. Akasema ya kwamba wanadamu wanaweza kuwa na uhusiano wa Mungu ya kwamba waseme mambo na yatendeke. We can promise that we can speak to situation. Tunaweza kutabiri, tunaweza kunenea hali. And we cause them to change. Na tuyasababishe kubadilika. 
Say amen. Say Marina. This is given to all believers. Hili limepeanwa kwa waaminio wote. Anybody who has faith in Jesus. Mtu yote aliye na imani ndani ya Yesu can speak and the things can happen. Anaweza nena na mambo yakatendeka. So if you are a believer, wewe kama wewe ni muaminii You can speak and the things can happen. Unaweza ukanena na mambo yakatendeka. So the conditions we are given, kwa hivyo yale masharti ambayo tumepewa, which will help us to move mountains, ambayo yatatusaidia kusongeza milima. One of them is to be a believer. Moja moja wapo ya haya masharti ni kuwa mwaminii. To be a believer is to be saved. Kuwa mwaminio ni kuokoka not to be a church go sio kuwa mtu wa mtu ambaye anaenda kanisa we have many people who go to church but they are not believers nao watu wengi ambao huenda kanisani lakini si waaminifu they do not have faith in Jesus hawana imani ndani ya Yesu what can you prove you have faith in Jesus is first accepting him to be your personal savior japo la kwanza la kudirisha imani yako kwa Yesu ni kumkubalia kuwa mwokozi wako because he said whosoever shall call upon his name shall be saved kwa maana alisema ya kwamba yeyote atakayeitia jina lake ataokoka so if you believe those words you will not mean in maneno haya you will call upon jesus utalitia jina la yesu because that is faith maana hiyo ni imani faith is believing that what the word of god says is true imani ni kule kuamini ya kwamba vile neno la mungu linavyosema ni kweli and if it just says when you call you will get saved that you believe it you call and jesus saves your life na kama inasema kwamba ukilitia jina lake utaokoka basi unalitia na unaokoka na yesu anakuwa na ukomba shaka so we should not only be church goers we should be believers in christ kwa hivyo atupasi kuwa tu washiriki wa kanisa bali waaminiwa wa kristo hallelujah amen when you have faith in him you can come out mountains problems situations and they can change kiwa na imani ndani yake unaweza kutamrisha shida hali na mambo na yakabadilika so the first condition for you to move a mountain is to be a believer kwa hivyo masharti ya kwanza ili kuamrishe milima ni kuwa na imani because we move mountains by the word of god kwa maana tunasongeza milima kwa neno la and we are saved by the word of god na tunaokolewa kwa neno la So for you to call Jesus to save you means you are faith in him. Kwa hivyo ili wewe uitie Yesu ili akuokoe inamaanisha unayo imani ndani yako. Because without faith you can never please God. Kwa maana pasipo imani hauwezi kupendeza. Kwa hivyo you have to come to him you have to believe that he is there. Na iwapo utakuja kwake lazima uamini ya kwamba yuko. And that he will reward you. Na kwamba atakulipa. Because you believe So you need to have faith in him. Kwa hivyo unahitajika kuwa na imani ndani yako. And your faith will move mountains. Na imani yako itaanisha milima. This one is not limited to pastors only. Hii haijaziliwa ama haijawekwa kwa wachungaji pekee. This one is for all believers in Christ Jesus. Hili ni kwa waaminio wote kwa jina la Yesu. And this sign shall follow them that believe. Ya kwamba ishara hizi zitawafuata wote wanaoamini. Hii ni not saying that this sign shall follow pastors. I say Mtu apaswa 
kulikuwa na kisasi na mwingine. Mark 11:25. Marko 11:25. Just down there where we are reading. Pale tu kwa tunasoma. And when he is done praying for king, if he have all against any, that your father also which is in heaven may forgive you your transgressions. Ninyi nani kila msimamapo na kusali. Sameheni ikiwa na neno juu ya mtu ile na baba yenu aliye mbinguni awasamehe ninyi makosa yenu. You see the devil knows that when you don't forgive and you are saved you you have got no power to move mountains. Shetani anajua kwamba wewe umeokoka na usipo usipo samehe au utakuwa na nguvu za kuamisha nini. You are a believer in Christ Jesus. Wewe ni mwaminio ndani ya Kristo. You are saved. Umeokoka but you are holding grudges with other people. Lakini una kisasi na mtu mwingine. There are people who have crossed your line and you have never forgiven them. Kuna watu wamekukosea na haujawasamehe. If you need to move a mountain, you must release that grief from your heart. Ni wapo uta utakuwa na uwezo wa kusogeza milima, lazima uondoe hicho kisasi kutoka kwa Mungu. Release forgiveness. Lazima wachilie usamaha. Some people have not forgiven their husbands. Kuna watu hawajawasamehe mabwana zao.
They caused me to pass by them round about, and behold, they were very many in the open valley, and alone they were very dry. Kono amana ulikuja juu yangu, na yake ni chukua nje katika roho wa wana. Kaniweka nchi katika, akaniweka chini katikati ya bonde na roho ulikuwa limejaa mifuko. Akanipitisha karibu nayo pande zote. Tanzama alikuwa na mifupa mingi katika ule uwana nayo Tanzama ilikuwa mikavu sana. We have read in the book of Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 1 and 2. Tumesoma Ezekiel 37 mstari wa 1 na 2. God took his servant spiritually in a valley which was full of bones. Mungu akamchukua mtumishi wake kiroho katika bonde ambalo ilikuwa limejaa mifupa. God had a reason. Mungu alikuwa na sababu. And God allowed his servant to view the situation. Na Mungu akamruhusu mtumishi wake aone hali. Before telling him to do anything else. Kabla ya kumwambia aseme chochote. He took him around the barn. Akamtembeza pale kwenye bonde. He says the barn was full of bones. Anasema bonde hilo lilikuwa limejaa mifupa. And he says they were very dry. Na anasema ilikuwa mikavu sana. Oh, uh, meaning they were bones of people who had died long time ago. Manisha kama ilikuwa mifupa ya watu ambao walikuwa wameshakufa kitabu. So God caused him to feel to look at the situation. Kwa Mungu anamuita ili atazame na kuona hali. He was going around looking at them. Ezekiel anatembea akitazama. They were very many in the open valley. Nilikuwa mingi mno katika bonde hilo. But the Bible says they were very dry. Biblia inasema kwamba mifupa hiyo ilikuwa mikavu sana. Now to the first step was for God just to take his servant to look at the situation. Kwa hiyo hatua ya kwanza ilikuwa Mungu ampeleke mtumishi wake aone hali. There was a reason for that. Na kulikuwa na sababu ya hayo. Why? Kwa nini God allowed him to look at the situation? Kwa nini Mungu alimruhusu kuangalia hali? What reason was there? Ni kwa sababu gani? It's like breaking his heart. Ni kana kwamba anamvunja moyo. He does not tell him why he's taking him around. Hamuelezi ni kwa nini anamzungusha pale. He tells him to go around look at it. Anamwambia tu zunguka angalia tazama. Let me open your minds. Wacha niwafungue mawazo hii. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. Katika manzo moja 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Mungu akaumba mtu kwa mfano wake. Kwa mfano wa Mungu, alimuumba mwanamume na mwanamke aliwaumba. Man is the only creature among God's creation which bears God's image. Mwanadamu ndio kiumbe cha pekee katika viumbe vyote vya Mungu kinacho kilicho na sura ya Mungu. So you are not at the level of animals. Kwa hivyo wewe hauko katika kiwango cha wanyama. You are unique from the image of God in you. Wewe ni tofauti una sura ya Mungu ndani yako. And that's why God gave man the mandate to rule the earth after creating it. Na ndio sababu Mungu aliwapa wanadamu wa wanadamu mamlaka kutawala kile ambacho Mungu aliwapa. But when sin came, lakini wakati dhambi ilipoingia the devil brought another case, another situation in our lives. We came to the human level. We came to the human level. Because of sin. And our image was distorted. We could not see where the image of God in us. Atunge kuwa na atunge ona vizuri ile sura ya mungu ndani yetu. And the things which could have been impossible with us became impossible with us. Na mama ambayo yangu kuwa na wezekana kwetu yakawa haya wezekana. And we came to a level of seeing we are not able. Na tukarege ya katika hali ya kuona ya kuwa mahatuwezi. So God takes his servant into a valley of dry bones. When Mungu anampeleka mtumishi wake katika bonde la mifupa kwa mimi na Bwana. There's something he wants to teach him. Kuna jambo anataka kumfundisha. 
Book of First Corinthians chapter three verse nine. Chapter three verse nine. Chapter three verse nine. Chapter three verse nine. Chapter three For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Maana sisi tuwafanya kazi pamoja na Mungu. Ninyi ni shamba la Mungu, ni jengo la Mungu. We are laborers together with God. Sisi ni wafanya kazi pamoja na Mungu. Now Paul is trying to bring back the image of God in us that we may see Sasa Paulo anajaribu kurejesha sura ya Mungu ndani yetu ili tuone ya kwamba sisi ni kitu. Anasema mimi ni mfanyakazi pamoja na Mungu. God wants to involve mankind in what he's doing. Mungu anataka kumhusisha mwanadamu katika yale anayoyafanya. God wants to show mankind you are my image. Mungu anataka kumuonyesha mwanadamu ya kwamba wewe una sura yangu. You can speak like me and things up. Unaweza ukanena kama mimi na mambo yakatendeka. Amen. Glory to God. But then it's a process because you've been lowered by the demonic power of sin. Lakini kuna njia ama kuna kuandaliwa maana tumejiteremsha tukawa kama wanadamu wa kawaida kupitia damu. Psalms 82:6 Zaburi 82:6 I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high Mimi nimesema ninyi ni wao na wana wa aliyejuu enyi nyote Do you Nimesikia Ule sabe ese Mimi mimi wa Zaburi anasema I have said ye are gods mimi nimesema ndinyi ni miungu ndinyi miungu and all of you are children of the most high na wana wa aliye juu ndinyi nyote and then in John chapter 10 first at 4 and 5 katika Yohana 10:34 na 35 Jesus comes up and says Yesu anakuja na anasema Jesus answered them is it not written in your law i said ye are gods if he called them gods unto whom the word of god it came and the scripture cannot be broken. Yesu atawajibu je, haikuwa ndiko katika Torati yenu ya kwamba mimi nimesema ndini miungu ikiwa aliwaita miungu wale walio uh, wale walio jiwa na neno la Mungu na maandiko uh, hayawezi kutambuka. This this God is in small g. Uh, hii Mungu miungu iko katika G. And you know God is capital G. Unajua Mungu ni G kubwa. So it, somehow we are being called or God is telling the Israel leaders you are gods. Kwa hiyo kuna God who has also as more God. Kwa hiyo kwa maneno mengine Mungu anawaambia uh, viongozi wa Israeli kwamba mimi ni Mungu na nyinyi ni miungu wadogo. In, in, in the New Testament they are telling Jesus you are making us your God. Kwa katika agano jipya wanamwambia Yesu wewe unajifanya kuwa Mungu. And then he tells them, na anawaambia. But you are also gods. Lakini hata nyingi ni miungu. You see this? A sense Jesus is bringing out. Unaona kuna maana ambayo Yesu anajaribu kutoa. He wants to eliminate mankind to a level of seeing him as a god. Anataka kumuinua mwanadamu kwa kiwango cha kujiona kama kama Mungu. He wants So that when you are faced by a situation which is impossible naturally you are but image and a faith in Christ you have been elevated to a level of being able to speak to situations and they obey you Kwa hivyo wakati unakumbana na hali na mambo ambayo ni kama hayawezekani umenuliwa na umetoka katika hali ya kawaida umenuliwa na ukaingizwa katika hali ya kuwa na sura na mfano wa Mungu na unaweza ukanenea mambo na yakatendeka Jesus had a big crowd one time was preaching Yesu alikuwa na mkutano mkubwa wakati mmoja akimbia so his disciples told, told him it is getting late let these people go home and look for him wanafunzi wake wakamwambia masaa yamesonga acha achana na hao watu waende 
down your mouth. John 6, 5. When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw the great company come unto him, he said unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Uh, verse 6, and this is said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Read. Verse yes.
Can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, thou knowest. Akaniambia, mwana nao, je, mifupa hii yaweza kuishi. Nami nikajibu, ee mwana mungu, wajua wewe. So God now begins testing Ezekiel. Mungu ananza kumjaribu Ezekiel. Son of man, mwanadamu, you have seen the bones. Mwana mifupa. You have seen now the stress and now it is they are dry. Men of them. Umeona hali jinsi ilivyo mifupa mingi na nimikavu but Ezekiel is a question can these bones live na Ezekiel anaulizwa swali hii mifupa inaweza ikawa hai tena he was a human like you alikuwa mwanadamu kama wewe he was human possibility alikuwa anaona vile hali haiwezekani he was able to say oh my god it is not possible alikuwa na uwezo wa kusema oh mungu wangu haiwezekani but that is not what he said. Lakini hivyo sivyo alivyosema. He had faith in God. Alikuwa na imani ndani ya Mungu. He told him, God, you know. Akamwambia Mungu, Mungu unajua. If they can live, God, you know. Kama inaweza ikaishi, Mungu wajua. Oh, glory to God. Tukofu kwa Mungu. When God heard those words from his servant. Wakati Mungu alivyosikia hayo maneno kutoka kwa mtumishi wake. Which proved he had faith in him. Ambayo yalidhihirisha kwamba alikuwa na imani ndani yake. Then another statement followed. Ah, ah, taarifa nyingine ikafuata. So today as we listen to the word of God. Baba leo kama tunavyosikiliza neno la Mungu. All of us are faced with situations and as a circumstances which are like the dry bones. Sisi sote tunakumbana na hali na mambo ambayo yanakaa kama mifupa mikavu. Things which seem to be beyond the ability of human being. Mambo ambayo yanakaa ni kana kwamba yako zaidi ya uweza wa na nguvu za mwanadamu. And God is asking us today. Mungu anatuuliza leo, is there hope? Je, unatumaini in this situation you are facing? Katika hii hali ambayo unakumbana nayo. You know how it is? Unajua hilo jambo jinsi ilivyo? Glory to God. Tukufu kwa Mungu. You have gone to doctors. Umeenda kwa madaktari. They have examined you. Wamekupima. They have told you that the case you are suffering. Wamekuambia ugonjwa unaogua. Some have told you it is not possible to be healed. Wengine wamekuambia hauwezi ukapona. Some have told you you will live on this drug for the rest of your life. Wengine wamekuambia utameza madawa haya maisha yako yote. But today God is asking you. Lakini leo Mungu anakuuliza. Can this sickness be here? Who God you know is upon? Can this bones live? He be who part in the way they can hide. So no man can this bones live. Mwanadamu, hii mifupa inaweza kuwa na uhai. God is asking you son of man. Mungu anakuuliza mwanadamu What is your response? Jibu lako ni lipi? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She sometimes doctors speak so breaking up words to patients. Mara nyingine madaktari huambia wagonjwa maneno yanayovunja moyo sana. Some are true, some are not true. Mengine, maneno mengine ni kweli, mengine si ya ukweli. Through fear some doctors have injected sicknesses in the in the, in the lives of people. Kupitia uoga na hofu, madaktari wameweka magonjwa mengine ndani ya watu. And you see when fear comes, faith goes. Na wakati hofu au uoga unapoingia, imani inatoweka. But today I stand on this altar in the name of Jesus. Lakini leo nasimama katika madhabahu hii katika jina la Yesu. I am declaring faith by faith. Ninatangaza kwa imani. The Bible says we will say things and they will come to pass. Nina sema kwamba tutatamka mambo na yatatimia. You command a mountain to be uprooted and it will obey you. Utaamrisha mlima kuongoka na utakutii. These words were spoken by Jesus. Haya maneno yalinenwa na Yesu. Today Jesus is alive. Leo Yesu ni hai. They killed him. Walimuua. For three days he was dead. 
Kwa siku tatu walikuwa wamekufa. But this Jesus I'm preaching he rose again from the dead. Lakini Yesu naye mhubiri alinuka alifufuka tena kutoka mauti. He came and revealed himself to his disciples. Alikuja na akajidhihirisha tena kwa wanafunzi wake. And when he was going back to heaven they saw him. Na alipokuwa anapaa tena kwenda mbinguni walimuona. I don't need to see because they saw him on my behalf. I mean, Mimi what they wrote what was written. Mimi sitaki kuona kwa maana walimuona kwa niaba yangu. Ninaamini kile walichoamini. But if you want to see him believe the testimony of this man who was stoned Stephen. Yeah. Na kama unataka kuamini, uh, kama unataka kumuona, amini uh, ushuhuda wa, wa Stefan. Because when they were stoning him, his eyes were open. Walipokuwa wanapiga mawe, macho yake yalifunguka. And he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of the majesty in the heavens above. Na akaona macho yake yakafunguka na akamwona Yesu akiketi kwenye kiti cha enzi. Glory to God. Utukufu kwa so, Jesus is alive. Kwa Yesu yuko hai. So these words were spoken by him. Kwa hiyo haya maneno yalinenwa naye. You will have what you say. Utapokea unachokinena. You will move a mountain by your words. Utasongeza milima kwa maneno yako. You need to have faith in what you say. Unahitajika kuwa na imani katika kile unachokitamka. So is asking you today. Kwa hiyo anakuuliza leo, son of man, mwanadamu, can these bones live? Hii mifupa inaweza ikaishi? Are you responding my sister my je, unajibu vipi kakangu dadangu? He is not showing you bones but he's showing you the situation, the cases whatever is around you. Yeye hakuonyeshi mifupa lakini anakuonyesha hali na ile yale mambo yanayo kuzunguka. Speaking the words of God. 
tumekuwa tukitabiria nje wetu ndio mimi promise yetu waoneshe kwa tumekuwa tukitabiria taifa letu and we have said corruption will come to an end in this nation na tumesema ya kwamba ufisadi utaisha kwa hii taifa in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu so when we hear noise kwa hiyo tunaposikia kelele we continue promise tunaendelea kutabiri we are not going to stop hatutaacha corruption must go yes. ufisadi lazima uishi in the name of jesus kwa jina la yesu so when you are prophesying for your family kwa hiyo unapotabiria jamii yako when you hear noise don't mind continue Jesus. 
Babylon. You face questions by faith and prophesy to them. Unakabiliana na hali kwa imani na unazitolea unabii. And when you prophesy things happen. Na unapotabii mambo yanatendeka. You prophesy to your family of God. Family people are not saved. Unaweza ukatabiria jamii yako kwa sababu ya watu wa jamii ambao hawa ya Mungu. The Bible says the book of Galatians uh, Acts chapter 16. Biblia inasema katika Mathayo ya mitume 16. And they say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So your house can be saved by that scripture. You can begin walking around and saying, the Bible says, I prophesy to you, I will be saved together with my household. Don't mind of how your husband is taking care. Don't mind of what is happening. The boats may be dropped. But God say what God is saying. You we shall be saved together with my, our family also. Say amen. Say amen. Psalm 18 verse 48. Zaburi 18:48 Deliver me from my enemies. Yes, yeah. Thou liftest me up above those that rise up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent men. Uniponya na anuiza. Naam. Waliinua juu yao walioninukia na kuniponya na mtu mjeu. Either you have enemies. Labda una maadui. Now there is a word you can speak to your enemies. Una neno unaweza ukanenea kuuliza. God will deliver me from my enemies. Prophesy to your enemies. My enemies, the Lord will deliver me from your hand. Glory to God. In the book of Psalms, chapter 1, verse 3. The scripture is very important. There, which is very important. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth this fruit in its season. His leave also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Naya tukuwa kama mchulio kwanu ngano kando uya vijito vya mani. Zao matuna yaki kwa majira yaki. Wala jani laki alinyauki, na kila alitendalo litapani. So I can promise out the work of my hand. Ninaweza ni kasabiria kazi za mikono ya. Listen the work of my hand. Kazi za mikono ya. So if that says the Lord, the works of my hand shall first prosper. Asema mwana. Chochote amacho ni chini ya hiyo ni chakipepo. Aida you are not using your mind well. Aida autumi mawazo yako bizu. Because some people don't need not to consult. Kwa maana watu wengine hawapati hawatafuti ushauri. They don't buy ideas from other people. Hawapati ushauri kutoka kwa watu wengine. God wants to prosper each one of you. Mungu angependa kukufanikisha kila mmoja wenu. Listen to me God does not prosper less people. Nisikilize. Don't use your 
kinachochukuliwa kwa maovu yetu yes. adhabu ya amani yetu ilikuwa juu yake kwa kupigwa kwake sisi tumepona